Hi guys, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. Today we have a pocket VU meter by Velleman. It's the MK115 kit and it's a uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And it, uh, all the foreign versions of the title, but that's the title. Pocket VU meter, some writing on the back that we don't care about. Now, if this is like most Velleman kits we have, <laughs> There won't be any instructions in the box, but I'm hoping otherwise, because frankly, having to find instructions on the interwebs is a bit of a tedium. Oh, that's an awful lot of transistors. I'm guessing each LED has its own transistor here. Nice. And indeed, there are instructions. And let's have a look at that little circuit there. Hmm. I spy with my little eye something beginning with T. Yes. Trillions of transistors. So we have here variable resistor in the base of this one. I'm trying to find out where's our microphone. Okay, so there's our microphone. So sound is coming in the microphone hole, <clears throat> and that is going to twitch, twatch the base of this transistor T1, which in turn is going to twiddle <laughs> the base of transistor T2, and that's the adjustment. So that's going to be the volume sensitivity type adjustment here. And then based on that, it's going through this resistor uh, ladder effectively. And you can see 10K, 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 10K. And as the voltage goes up and down, it will start to incrementally or decrementally trigger the bases of these transistors these nuts and those transistors will be pulling down on the LEDs and then illuminating them. So that's cool. So if you're not aware on the transistor, let's isolate this one. When you put a voltage here of about 0.8 volts, the transistor will be 100% on and 100% of the current will be flowing through the LED down here, down there. And it goes boing and down there. Right, that's how the transistors work. Um, as you lower that voltage, of course, um, the transistor will, there's a curve on it, um, but there's a, a, a band uh, which will, let's say, represent 0% and 100% of closing that contact. And that will affect that. But I don't know in the circuit how we're gonna, if it's kind of more or less just an on off effect or if some of them go dim. Sometimes the ones right at the end, you know, imagine it's coming from here, it's going, that those ones might be a little bit dim and twitchy because they're just on the edge of the torrent. But that's uh, enough. Enough technical jargon. We don't need that. We just want to build it. We don't really need to know how it works. <laughs> I just noticed this one comes with a tie clip as well and it's battery. So when it says pocket size, it's like literally pocket size, as in you can have this in your pocket walking around. This is a walking around device. It's not often we see those. There's a little knob end here. Look at this. Let's show you. There's a little knob. Let's not lose that. So I'm going to pop that straight on there for the twiddler. Look at that. I've got a twiddler. You've got your pocket clip, like Dilbert. You need a pocket protector to walk around with that. You've got your PCB, nicely uh, nicely laid out, actually, very clear. You probably don't need to worry too much about getting a lot of these down because they're all going to be quite similar. You, you're going to have the, all, the, all the transistors are the same on this board. Most of the resistors are 10Ks, which will be these guys that are all wrapped up together. There's a few signal diodes, so I think we should just get stuck in. I'm going to have a quick tidy up though. And you can see I've done my little bit of tidying up. I've pre-bent some of the resistors here, but well, in fact all of the resistors so that they're easy to insert. Um, I tried to lay them out a little bit value wise, but we'll have to do that as we go along. We have our transistors. Now let's get the pain out of the way and do the resistors. Okay, so we're going to look here on the board, we've got R1 to place, and then you just look up your PCB and say, okay, there's your R1, it's right there, and I'm gonna zoom in to get to see it, there's your R1, and then we're gonna to have to populate R1, and we look on our diagram, which is just off camera, and it says R1 is 4K7, which is yellow, purple, red, and actually that happens to be one that I've put out here in the first position. So we're just gonna pop the R1 in, while I'm doing that, I'm trying to look. Uh, oh, I put it in the R2 slot. Uh, R2 um, is 4M7, so 4.7 mega ohms, which is yellow, purple, and green, which happens to be this guy, R2. So be very careful um, with the positioning here. You don't want to just put resistors in willy nilly any old hole, which I have seen before. Um, you will get very 
un, un, uh, unappealing results. R3 is 68k, which is blue, grey, orange, which again, that's where we're getting getting to the end of the point where I already actually ordered some of these because it goes a bit crazy now. So R4 starts to become a 10k and a 10k, of course, yellow, purple, brown. Um, that's not in there. Sorry, did I just say 10k? That's brown, black, orange, isn't it? That's brown, black, orange. Yeah, and that's why I thought there's a lot of them you see on here, so that's why they're still in that big old bundle. So that is R4. And on this board, it's a bit interesting because the spacing's slightly different. So you can see I pre-bent that one, but actually I'm going to have to cajole it to fit into the hole because some of the hole spacings are slightly different. R5 is yellow, purple, brown. Uh, yellow, purple, brown. So on and so forth. So I'm just going to sit here and populate all the resistors. I know that you'd like to join me on every single resistor going in. I might skip ahead. I just thought I'd just give you a little bit of news. There is so many boxes here right now. I'm, I'm very um, box rich and uh, time poor at the moment. There's a lot of uh, YouTube videos to be made, back office videos to be made. Um, so little time. R6, orange, white, brown. Um, orange, white, brown. There we go. R6. Um, but they're so cool. I mean, it's, it's some lovely stuff here. Uh, again, thank you so much for my patrons and those people who've sent stuff in who aren't patrons but send stuff in in lieu of being a patron. And I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be covering some of your uh, things you've sent in soon enough. Red, purple, brown. Red, purple, brown for R7. Um, and try to do it some justice. And this, of course, what you're seeing today is, uh, again, directly uh, sponsored by patrons. So, again, thank you so much for that. Right, as I said, I'm going to turn off the camera now and put on the next seven resistors back. I lied. I didn't put in all the resistors, but what I did, I put all the resistors in apart from the uh, uh, 10Ks, which is fantastic. The, any resistor hole now on the board is one of these. It's really simple and I can I can think and talk. So uh, just to let you know then what's coming up in some of those videos, we have another nondescript uh, Chinese kit. In fact, it's here. We have a really cool thing that my dad found in the loft, which is something he bought way back when. And this is a, a Nombrex signal generator, and I'm really interested in seeing what's inside that. We have a very cool piece of ZX Spectrum hardware, which I'm just keeping a little bit of as a surprise. We have some uh, dangerous equipment to have a go at playing with and servicing. We're talking nail guns here. So that's something I've never had, never used, but have obtained purely on the basis that it was cheap on Facebook Marketplace. So Facebook Marketplace is an evil place. Does, do any of you uh, boys and girls at home use Facebook Marketplace? It's it's kind of like the car boot sale of the internet, you know, or, it, or a yard sale if you're in the US. Um, purely because it's so convenient and you find stuff. I mean, I've used it before just to get rid of stuff because you go if you if you've got that old sofa and you're really you know you want to get rid of an old sofa and it's just frankly it's a pain isn't it getting rid of furniture and I was I was willing to just dump this thing if I could I didn't have transport for it at the time and um, I just thought okay I'll put it on Facebook marketplace for you know 50 pounds or whatever and that's it someone snapped it up instantly so it's like again you know what they say about one man's one man's junk is another man's treasure. And uh, I, I certainly am interested in the junk, it seems. So yeah, don't go on Facebook Marketplace if you can help it, unless you've got a lot of space. Now you can see I'm using uh, the older um, soldier. I can't remember what we called this thing. I can't even remember the make of it. The TS100. Um, because I've used up my tip, my JCB... Or was it JBC? JBC, sorry, uh, soldering iron. Um, the tip on it died, and I went to get another one. And they're so incredibly expensive. I didn't think that's the the, the sort of thing I, I should um, be investing our patron fund on when I do have perfectly serviceable uh, soldering iron to use. 
um, but you can see I've, I've kind of gone over some of the pads there. It's not quite as uh, controllable, it's a bit more brute force and ignorance and I do have to adjust my technique to compensate. They, it, I don't think Velleman have done themselves a favour though, they've put together, I'll show you why it's a problem. You can see here there's some figure of eight pads and where I've gone wrong, like here where they flowed into each other and I don't like that, I don't I don't even know how they did that in their um, design software. It really shouldn't be allowing you to have your pads so near because there's no solder resist and they'll flow into each other like they're doing. I'm just thinking this is a, a, a legacy design, this PCB or something. Okay, but I think we've more or less got away with it. Again, not one of those things to worry about too much. If, you, if you've done that, you'll, you'll get by. So that's all the resistors nicely placed. I do believe we're going to get this kit done in record time, you know. As long as we've got the actual batteries it's going to need, which look suspiciously like CR2032s. And I'm just munching. I have forgotten to solder a few here. That's OK. We'll get to those guys. We'll get to them. I like to trim as I go. Some people leave all the legs till last, which is crazy, right? How can you place your components in while it's all like a big dead spider? I do like this idea. I mean, this is a circuit you could replicate, by the way. If you want to make some snazzy VU meter lights for your PC case or your your retro bit of equipment that you'd love some flushing, some blinking LEDs on, then go for it got the nice circuit diagram there. You just clone that up, get it into your CAD package, but you know, do avoid this annoying figure of eight footprint thing. That's that's not nice. Okay, enough belly aching, more placing. What do we fancy next? Um, I think we fancy signal diodes purely because then that's all of the flattest uh, components out of the way. In fact, if you were going to do this yourself at home and you're doing it again, start with the signal diodes because they are the shortest thing. If you go from shortest component to longest, it's just easier because when you flip the board, you can rest the board on the component and they're not trying to jostle the way out. Um, you can see I'm not really consulting the instructions at this point because it's very difficult to go wrong. But on the diodes, there is a black line. Make sure that black line lines up with the di uh, the silk screen there's a there's a, a, a white diodey end you'll see i'm gonna zoom in don't worry <clears throat> we have a frog in my throat today there you go see the d1 and then you see the led underneath it with the black line that's the way we're going to put it in and it goes in just like that now what you'll see when i flip it this is the bit where not being the shortest component on the board is annoying because they're they're going to try to hang out of the PCB a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solder one leg on each, like so, and uh, <coughs> Derek uh, Flame Lily, who kindly sent in the blue SCSI uh, last week's video, he said in a tweet yesterday that he learnt to solder watching my videos. So that was quite, um, I don't know if it's true. It could just be flattering. Derek, is it just flattering, flattery? Or is that, is there an element of truth to that? Because if there is, it's, it's very gratifying to hear something like that, isn't it? That you, at least you did your little part. You've helped moved on the hobby a touch. So please, anybody comment down below if you've learnt to solder from watching these videos, or at least learnt how not to do certain things. Ouch. And one of those could be solder. <laughs> I unlearnt how to solder by watching your videos, and then I had to go on and watch Julian Illit and Big Clive's videos to get an idea of how to do it. That would be... I don't think that there's anybody here would be saying something like that. That would be very unkind, especially to someone like me who's clearly convalescing. I can barely barely talk. <clears throat> You've lucked out. You've lucked out today in this video, me being able to barely talk. I think LEDs are the, uh, the next order of the day. Now I do have an awful problem with LEDs because 
we know it's long leg positive but we've got the the picture of the LED and it shows a flat spot and it makes me kind of really wonder like hang on a minute is the flat spot the positive end or is the flat spot the negative end so I might have to go and do a little bit of research on that one first in fact I can see in the picture it's saying uh, the cathode which is the negative is actually the flat spot so I'm gonna go put the long leg up and hopefully that's right if it's not right we've got a lot of flipping around to do afterwards <laughs> so I'm gonna go long leg up so if you're you're building this at home watch to the end because I'm telling you I'm not sure if this is entirely correct but it is a Velleman kit so I expect their instructions not to have errors <laughs> And it's the sort of thing that, you know, you pick, you, you do learn these things as you go along, but then you forget. So what I think you should be learning is learning when to spot the signs of danger. Don't, don't just jump in. You go, OK, I might have this wrong. I don't have all of the information here to hand. So I'm going to research it to the nth degree, which I don't do. I don't have time for that. Or I'm going to go with my best guess and use the materials, instructions and things that are here and try to interpret them as best as I can. And then mitigate for the failure if it's, if it's all wrong. I mean, if it's all wrong, it just means I have to turn these LEDs around. And although it's a pain in the bum to have to do that, it's certainly not the end of the world. And I'm just trying to get them all straightened up as best as I can before I solder that second leg. So you don't want them all a bit you know, wonky. Now you've got an option here too. If you have other LEDs, of course you can just use those, but you might like, the, op the option being, of course, um, you might like to put a green, 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 red LED or green, green, yellow, red, red LED, etc. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember VU meters from your childhood on your bit of Amstrad hi-fi, and I'm using the word very, of course, loosely um it would have had lots of colors wouldn't it because you you need those because i love i love by the way looking at the camera i love how my now quite big pot of loose ends heavy is uh almost like a camouflage it's like pcb camo and you're probably squinting trying to figure out what am i doing but don't worry i'm gonna move it and this is a single-sided pcb so at least when you look on the back and you see lines like that where they're coming across you think oh have I bridged it yeah you're supposed to have bridged it it's fine so what next I'm almost uh, two minds about the transistors versus putting down some electrolytic capacitors but no I think transistor time I'm popping them all out just so for speed look at that that was some speed transistor popping in and they came out that beautiful I've definitely had some very gnarly transistors not wanting to come out of the tape so you can see, I'm going to zoom in because it's going to be important, transistors have a curvy side and a flat side. And of course, depending on the part number, some of those legs can be all mixed up. And you'll find this when you start working between different brands of transistors or NPN and PMP. Sometimes they really are like as if they're designed to get you out on purpose. So just be aware of it. Most transistors, most things could be interchangeable. And I'm talking footprint interchangeable. But just not always, just check. None could particularly spring to mind, but it definitely uh, this year I would have had an incident like that. And then it's crazy. If you get these wrong, by the way, and you lay out the wrong footprint, <laughs> oh, it's sometimes an awful um, bit of, you know, silicon origami to try to get your pins and legs all in again. You know, sometimes it's just that test board, but you need to have that one board made before you can get the next revision of your PCB out. So you have to make it work and in trying to make that work it can be quite the challenge so look we're almost there now that's pretty much all of them just the last one and the last one of course is reversed so he's got the curvy end the way you wouldn't expect it there's always a gotcha like that just to get you that's fine they're looking nice and let's see they're gonna sit quite nicely there because the uh, transistors have a nice flat head go and just tack one leg down that's all you need you're going to tack the one leg down tack it down to Chinatown 
and then we're going to flip the board, check it's all good, and then just jump in and wallop them all with a big chunk of solder, of which I'm running out, and I'm rather annoyed at myself for not ordering more, seeing as I've literally had an Amazon order come in that I placed yesterday, which I could have added, and then now I feel bad for the environment, because then if I make another order, the Amazon driver is going to come out again, just to give me a roll of solder. Ugh. This is the this is the world we live in right now, isn't it? Having to make these these decisions, these these moral decisions on uh, our purchasing habits. And uh, you know, I'm just going to end up ordering one. I'm sure if I remember, I would just do it, and I'd have to let Mother Nature take one for the team this time. I would feel probably slightly less guilty if I could go out and buy a roll of solder somewhere locally, but that doesn't exist anymore. Maplins doesn't exist. Tandy's doesn't exist. Some generic TV repair shop on the high street doesn't exist. There's a lot of things that don't exist anymore. Maybe they should exist. Okay, last three. It's getting tricky, but not too tricky. You can see, if you're doing this at home, just take your time. If you do it one at a time and cut the legs each time as well, think how easy it would be to get in there and solder. But I'm just, I'm just worming my tip in there, worming it around till I reach what I'm looking for, and then I apply that bit of solder. And some people will like to use flux if you got it. Use it if you got it. You can see I'm just munching away these pins with gay abandon. I'm not really, I'm not stopping for anything. I'm like a juggernaut of uh, pin chuckulations. We're there, we're there, and we're done. And I'm spent. Let's do that. Knock, knock, knock. Green giant. That's looking amazing. This is a, a, a bloody nice board, I can tell you. Right, let's get our uh, electrolytics, I think, because they're the last of the real components, and then the rest are just magic things, you know. Odds. Now the capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, do go in one way, make the long leg positive, and there's a nice little positive drawn on the footprint. You can't really get it wrong. Let's see. Ooh, that would be wrong, but that is right. I'm doing it through the viewfinder. I even did that view that through the viewfinder. So if I can do it through the viewfinder, which I'm having an awful lot of trouble saying today, then you're going to have no problem with your old squinty squinty balls right up to it like an yoldy fashioned jeweler oh no i flipped that one too soon an oldie fashioned jeweler looking for a loop there you go let's get that last one c4 the most explosive capacitor <laughs> i hope there'll be no exploding of these capacitors because they'll be clipped to my my pocket this would have been a cool kit to have whilst videoing <laughs> a video like this so you could have the vu meter running in the uh, corner of the, the the frame but i wonder what we could do with it how would you use a vu meter if you had it i suppose you could uh have it next to your camera if you're recording something but you'd, you'd have to have it always fixed i think ideally so you'd have it on your camera setup pointing at the subject and then you could keep the adjustment knob the same you'd have to have it all kind of dialed in wouldn't you like you're not going to touch that otherwise you'd have too many things being adjusted right microphone in that can only go in one way if you get that in wrong you would have to be doing something crazy bad because it's got three um three pins effectively but it's two pins and a can so it's a very distinct footprint in fact, I've never seen one like that, but I'm really kind of quite glad that they exist, especially on this kit. That looks like an expensive part, actually. Now, you'll probably wonder where I got this kit from. I got it from Amazon, so I'm not really sure exactly what I paid for it, but it was definitely under a tenner, I'm thinking around the fiver mark. Um, I'm not even sure who the vendor was. I did, you know, I'm very, being very glib today, but I know you like to go out and find these things out yourself. It used to be a time where everybody would be going, source, source, but I was like, well, I give you a link. It either doesn't work or you just get it from somewhere else anyway. So, you know, take that, source. 
And the final bit now is our battery holder. Look at that, that is looking nice. The battery holder is requiring me to do a bit of hand gymnastics. I want to hold it in place while I apply some solder. But that's fine. Look at that. Look at that thumb control there. He fed it in. He fed it in like he was feeding a gerbil. Look. Num, num, num. Done. Beautiful. And I'm just realising that weird area here with this weird texture is to stick that clip on, isn't it? So you're going to wear it vertically. Let's get a battery. I do happen to have a bunch quite near the camera, so we're in luck. I'm going to go for the 3.2. It, it might be a bit fat. <clears throat> now remember, the second number on these is the thickness of these batteries. And if you buy them, do get a selection, because sometimes you do need the uh, thinner ones if it's like a car remote control or something. Oh, no on-off switch. It's purely just gone straight in, and it's not sitting quite nicely because maybe that... It does say a CR2032, though. I wonder why it doesn't sit so nicely. Let me just check that. Hmm, I think that's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. That's just the way it is. Oh, yeah. Do-do-do-do-do. Do-do-do-do-do. Do-do-do. Do, okay, well, sorry, we're getting carried away there. So let's turn the knob all the way to the left. And I'm just going to speak normally. And it does act in a quite strange way, doesn't it? Now I'm going to turn the knob all the way to the right. And you can see it does seem to be a little bit flickery, flickery. Hmm. Oh, that's good for my throat. <coughs> oh, do. What are you doing? That is such a weird response. Maybe I'm just too close to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get further back. Further away. Okay. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Right, I can't make head nor tail about it, but let's see. If, if, let's pretend for a moment that we actually consulted the instructions and if it has anything. Um, that's all just about the recycling. And there's absolutely nothing there. <laughs> but let's see, twiddling the knob, of course, is just affecting, <coughs> affecting the gain here. I'm wondering why we just see like a bit of a delay. It's, it's odd because well, I mean, if we're touching here, it seems pretty instantaneous. Hello, hello. Tis what it is. I think we've uh, come to the point where we're just going to attach the shirt clip and say we're done. <laughs> ah! Now that is good adhesive. That's some good adhesive. It's really sticky. And there you go, you can clip that on and walk around with it and everybody will be going, whoa, whoa, bro, what's that? And you'll go, you don't know what that is? Do you even hi-fi? <laughs> anyway, I think that's probably enough for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe and consider, of course, buying me a coffee or something through Patreon. And as ever, thank you for watching.